Welcome everyone to today's masterclass on hyaluronic acid. What is it? How can we get more of it both at home and also in the clinic? And what does it do? What does hyaluronic acid actually do for our cells and for our skin? And warmly welcome all of you who are here for the live recording of Andrea, Eunice, Kim, SK, Teresa, Jennifer, and many more joining us as well. So let me know what your questions are about hyaluronic acid. A lot of times you'll see posts on social media that are talking about hyaluronic acid for this or for that, but it doesn't really actually explain exactly what hyaluronic acid is. So what I'd like to do is start there. Hyaluronic acid is known as a hydrophilic molecule, meaning that it loves water. What does that mean for us? It means that it can help with skin and cellular hydration. And what's the benefit to that? Obviously, everyone wants hydrated skin, and we actually need hydrated cells. That's why we drink yummy things like our bulletproof coffee with protein powder, a scoop of collagen. I have the, this is um, not bulletproof coffee, rather danger coffee. And then uh, 10 grams, which is one scoop of the Organifi collagen and also the Paleo Valley. My favorite is the chocolate protein. So it's like a mocha, but I'm out of that. So I'm on the unflavored and it's delightful as well. And you can get the coffee, the collagen and the protein on my biohacking page. So we are drinking things to hydrate us. Nobody's good to anybody if they're dehydrated and then they might need an IV or something or go to the hospital, get that addressed pronto. We need to stay hydrated. There are some nuances with water and hydration through water. And I actually have a great recent episode with the founder of the Analima Wand, where we really get into some of the scientific details and nuances about water, the differences in quality of water, and also what structured water can do for us, as well as we highlight some really cool studies on twins. And when drinking purified structured water, brainwave activity was actually improved, which is pretty incredible, especially looking at an identical twin study for that. So there's some nuances with water. There's some nuances on what you can be drinking day in and day out. But when it comes to, say, for example, our skincare, it's not uncommon to see in a moisturizer or a serum the ingredient hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid is a water-loving molecule. There's also some other nuances here that I'm going to break down for you is that there's different sizes of the hyaluronic acid molecule. Some are really big, some are really small and can enter the skin cell when applied topically a little bit easier. It can get through the different channels to actually integrate itself into the cell. So that's a really interesting nuance because when you're looking at a serum that has hyaluronic acid or a moisturizer that has hyaluronic acid, you don't just care about if it has hyaluronic acid. You also want to care about if that final formulation contains a form of molecular hyaluronic acid that is actually bioavailable and doesn't just sit on the skin. So when hyaluronic acid is in a topical product like a serum, or like a moisturizer, this adds as a humectant. It's mixed in with the vitamin C. Say, for example, the super serum that I have on the shop. That's a great one. It has uh, reishi mushroom in it, vitamin C, and other antioxidants. And then the copper peptide also has hyaluronic acid as well as copper peptide. And uh, some, other, some other goodies in there too. So it actually can grab water from the air and help to keep the skin hydrated, which is pretty cool when you think about it. We can put this molecule in a topical skincare product and it can actually grab water from the air to help keep the skin well hydrated. Hyaluronic acid is commonly used in practitioner grade skincare. That's what I provide on my skin shop, our practitioner grade skincare products. Now, if you're going online and you're seeing ads for this new serum and the five hero ingredients are vitamin C, vitamin E, hyaluronic acid, some type of peptide and something else, but it isn't really a brand you've heard much about, well, aside from their advertising, and it hasn't really been around a long time, 
or if it's made in someone's kitchen, you do want to question if the size of the hyaluronic acid molecule is actually bioavailable and will actually be able to get into the cell and do its thing as opposed to just staying on top of the skin. So there's some nuances in regards to the technology. I'm going to refer to hyaluronic acid as HA from here on forward as an abbreviation. So I think I've already said hyaluronic acid 20 times here. So we're going to call it HA. There's some nuances to know about HA. That's what it does is it helps with skin hydration, but the molecular sizes can vary. That's why it's really important to work with products from companies that do analysis and testing on their final formulation. And it also just works really well. You don't have to use a lot of the product. It's worth the price point and it can layer really well with then your moisturizer, your eye cream, and also your sunscreen. So I wanted to talk about HAs in skincare first and foremost. When it comes to HAs in the clinic, from the rejuvenation perspective, this is a little bit different. You've probably heard of dermal fillers. Dermal fillers are routinely used in a medical aesthetics plastic surgery setting to actually basically inject a gel that's composed of hyaluronic acid as well as BDDE sugar molecules to keep those hyaluronic acids together. I'm gonna to describe the difference of hyaluronic acid in a skincare product and hyaluronic acid in an injectable filler, like dermal fillers. Again, dermal fillers are used to restore lost volume. So we lose volume in our cheeks, we lose volume in the marionette zone here, and other areas of the face as well. We lose bone, we lose fat, we lose collagen and elastin. And dermal fillers can be really helpful for restoring lost volume and plumping the lips. But when done inappropriately and beyond the ideal facial ratios, that's when people can start to look a little bit strange. And we've all seen those individuals where their lips enter the room or the coffee lineup before they do. We don't want to be pursuing rejuvenation that's going to make us look strange, but it's okay to desire to pursue rejuvenation to just kind of refresh your look a little bit, just kind of get you back to where you once were volume wise, maybe five, 10 years ago. And fillers aren't the be all end all solution either. There's lots of other in clinic rejuvenation options that are going to help support collagen and elastin, such as lasers, such as your at home dermal rolling. And I share my full start to finish dermal rolling lesson in my skincare tutorials. That's a great way to keep your skin thicker and plumper by stimulating collagen and elastin. Underneath, we can also plump up the tissues with things like hyaluronic acid fillers. So HA fillers, again, are typically applied to the cheeks, the marionette zone, the lips. They can also be applied to the jawline area, the neck, and lots of other interesting places. I do have opinions on that. And actually my first research article that I published was actually to provide awareness to not do HA fillers, dermal fillers in the lower eyelid area. Now, why is that? Because it is so water loving that when it's placed in the delicate eye area in the tear trough, so you've probably seen before and after photos of someone who had filler in their lower eye bag and then poof, their dark circles, their lower eye bags are gone. That can be the immediate result, but what you don't see is actually too much water has been grabbed essentially into that area in the lower eyelid and it can create puffiness, it can create edema, it can create unnatural looking contours. And then it can actually migrate in behind the eyeball, uh, which, which we've seen on MRIs and filler in this area in the lower eyelid. I took a stand for that pretty early on in my career. I've also been in the industry since 2011, especially in the field and specialty of oculoplastics. So when someone had an issue from another clinic that they had tear trough fillers performed and there was migration, there was swelling, there was puffiness, there was blockage of the lymphatic drainage. You could see the blue hue, the Tyndall effect of the light reflecting off of HA underneath that very, very thin skin, then I had to correct it. 
So I wrote a research paper on what to do instead so you don't have to go straight to tear trough filler to address a sunken lower eyelid area or eye bags or dark circles. So that's something I took stand for really early on in my career because I kept seeing lots of issues, whether it was a month later, whether it was seven months later or seven years later, for example. Some of these individuals that I saw had tear trough fillers they would actually present like they had just been stung around the eyes by a bee. It was terrible. These individuals couldn't even work when the edema was happening and it was very disfiguring for them. And it, it actually had to end up being dissolved. So when filler, HA fillers are placed incorrectly, we can dissolve it with a special enzyme called hyaluronidase. So it can be reversed. Filler in certain areas, HA fillers, can last up to 10 years, but they typically last anywhere from six months to nine months to a year, a year and a half. It just depends on a couple of different factors. Are you sleeping on that side of the face? Are you sleeping on your side? Are you sleeping on your stomach? And also, what are the muscles doing around that filler? Are they moving a lot? Because with really active facial muscles, the muscles are going to be kind of squishing that filler and actually breaking it down faster. So those are some nuances as to why some people go through their filler a little bit faster, as well as some people simply just metabolize it a little bit faster. But do I like HA fillers? I do. They serve a purpose when done well. But as with everything, especially in the rejuvenation world, everything is half art and half science. It isn't just about looking for the best deal of HA fillers online at a clinic near you. And actually, the best clinics aren't going to be discounting their HA filler treatments at all. And I know this and I teach this to the many doctors and nurses that I teach across North America and beyond. By the way, if you are a practitioner, I would love to connect with you. Send me an email, info at theschoolofradiance.com, and I will get you started on ways to enhance your education through various different options that I provide to support your training. I love teaching both the practitioner and also the patient. So that's really what I want you to know about dermal fillers, HA fillers. Some other nuances with HA fillers that are really good to be aware of is I personally don't recommend flying about seven to 10 days after you've had a filler treatment, because when we get up to altitude, you've probably seen this with your calves or your feet, you get swelling. And I have noted this in some of my clients over the years that reported that when they got off their flight and they had fillers done recently, they looked quite puffy. And again, it's just the lymphatics, they're swelling throughout the body from going to altitude. So it is a good idea to plan out your rejuvenation in accordance with what's going on in your life and special event and special events and travel plans. And I have tons of clients that come to see me in the clinic from across the globe. And this is one of the things that I like to mention is to hold off on any flight travel plans for about seven to 10 days after having dermal fillers done. There are some other interesting things that can happen. I have seen that when someone say had fillers in their lips and then they came down with a cold or a flu bug or a virus or something like that, they actually had their lymphatics were sort of sluggish to begin with because the lymphatics actually help your body move around different things and pathogens. It's supportive of the immune system. So if, say, for example, you've had filler, you're coming down with something and your filler is kind of looking a little bit extra puffy, it can be related to lymphatic drainage. In lesson one in my seasonal skincare tutorials, I teach a fantastic, easy to do technique that you can actually integrate with your AM and PM skincare routines. And you shouldn't be using a gua sha tool, in my opinion. You should be using your fingertips. And even if you don't have HA dermal fillers, it's a good idea to move the lymph around anyways to also help reduce puffiness in areas where we might not want it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments around the concept of HA dermal fillers in the clinic. Again, when they're done appropriately and in alignment with the ideal facial ratios 
and also to keep the natural looking characteristics of an individual, it can have a fantastic result and just give this lifting and plumping type of look, like a youthful look. But again, it's half art, half science. One syringe of HA dermal fillers can be very different in the hands of another practitioner that's very skilled at using it and placing it. One thing I will add about HA dermal fillers, and this is what I wrote in my research, one of my recent papers on oxidative stress status and its impacts on skin aging, is to consider delaying rejuvenation until you're feeling well if you're coming down with something and if you're fighting something. The same thing goes if you have an autoimmune condition. People with autoimmune conditions are the ones who are going to have unusual responses to just about anything. So that's also something to consider as well. So my paper on oxidative stress talked about this very concept to only have rejuvenation when you're feeling really good. These are elective things to do and your health should always be first and foremost. But if something's really bothering you, like nasolabial folds, jowls, lip lines, this flatness to the cheeks, lines to the neck area, horizontal necklace lines, there are things that we can do. And if you're curious about the different options, where to go and what to do and get a you know third party opinion, this is really where my one-on-one -on -one sessions shine. And I'd love to talk you through and answer any questions and basically provide some options and a plan for you to then go and pursue this, whether it's with me or if it's with a practitioner that's a little closer to you. HA dermal fillers, I really like them. I have been using them for years, but as with everything, not everything is good for everyone. Again, this concept of safe and effective, you really can't actually, I think, ever use that type of terminology because everyone has a variation with their oxidative stress status levels, and especially if there's some underlying health concerns and also things like autoimmune conditions. The other ways that HA dermal fillers are used is in cocktailing. Cocktailing has become very popular, I would say over the last five to six years, because I teach so many doctors and nurses and their teams across North America, I've seen this become really popular in clinics and how cocktailing is utilized is a little vial with some needles on the end of it with hollowed out needles that's basically screwed onto the top of this vial. What, what a lot of practitioners, not a lot of practitioners, but some practitioners are putting in like a squirt of glutathione, a squirt of, say, for example, Botox, which is a neuromodulator. There's other brands of Botox, by the way. A couple of squirts of hyaluronic acid, dermal filler, and then they're shaking it up and then they're doing stamping on the skin with this cocktail that they created. Now, I have a problem with that because the products on their own, are cleared to perform a certain purpose and they're researched for adverse events. This is what we want to avoid in the cosmetic dermatology med spa plastic surgery world are something called adverse events. So for my paper that I wrote on oxidative stress, it really was my effort to help reduce the number of adverse events by providing this education for practitioners to really actually take a little extra time and assess their patient on the day when they're coming in for rejuvenation. If they're fighting something, if they just came off of a flight, if they're stressed out to the max, that's not going to be the time to offer rejuvenation. So this cocktailing component, whether it's in a vial with a top with needles in it and then it's stamped on the skin or in clinic microneedling, and then this cocktail is applied afterwards, I do have some concerns around that because again, those individual products are tested and have their own safety and efficacy profile. But when they get mixed together, you can get interactions. There can be something called pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics. There can be um, 
a communication between the neuromodulator, the filler, the glutathione, whatever else was added, that might actually change the molecule to be something that wasn't intended and then have an unintended effect. I think that this has been done with pretty good success. However, when thinking about the science and just the potential for molecular interactions with the compounds and the chemicals, not all chemicals are bad, by the way. HA is a chemical, so is water. Water is H2O, the combination of oxygen and hydrogen. That's a great chemical for us. Hyaluronic acid is also a great chemical for us. So if you're hearing things like chemical free and the first ingredient is water, or if there's anything in that product whatsoever, that's a chemical. Again, it just depends if that chemical is good for us or if it's not good for us. That's what we care about. And then potentially putting chemicals together and getting some type of then end product that's a chemical equation. We have a product, we have another product, then we have the arrow, we have the reaction or equilibrium, and then we have, uh, sorry, we have the reactant with another reactant, then we have the equilibrium or chemical reaction happening, and then we have the product. So when you put different reactants together, you're going to get a different product. You're going to get a chemical that has a different chemical nature, makeup, and also safety profile. So that's why I've never really been a fan of cocktailing and essentially being a cowboy in the medical aesthetic space because you're kind of just waiting and seeing, okay? So I hope that I've adequately explained some of the nuances with HA dermal fillers, some of the nuances with HAs in topical serums and moisturizers, they can all be fantastic. Again, with fillers, it just depends on the hands that it's in and also the health of the individual. And then also with products, it depends on the size of the AHA and whether or not that final formulation is stable and actually providing the results that you want. Just a reminder to not buy any of your skincare, personal care products, food items, or supplements from third-party auction websites because that packaging and the description of the product online might seem like the same product from the manufacturer because they copied and pasted the image in the description, but it could actually be counterfeit. And we're seeing this more and more. So don't look for the best deals online. I've also come across some wholesale distributors for products at really steep discounts, anywhere from 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 percent off there's some other nuances with that too number one is it a fake product number two has it been stored at ambient temperature long term this these are really important nuances to consider that i consider which is why i'm such a stickler for as fresh product as possible so if anything is ever out on my skin shop it means i already have new products on its way and coming, which is great. The other thing to consider with HA is how can we hydrate our cells? I talked a little bit about structured water, and I recommend if you haven't listened to that podcast with the Analima Water Wand Company to actually go back and listen to it because the way that we hydrate our bodies matter. But there is actually a product that can support cellular hydration that tastes absolutely delightful. This is the Organifi Glow Superfood Adaptogenic Juice Powder. It's a powder, it tastes like pink lemonade, and it has superfoods, adaptogens, and something called tremella mushroom. Now, what's interesting about tremella mushroom is that it actually holds the weight of water a thousand times greater than one HA molecule. So HA isn't the holy grail of skin hydration. There are actually other compounds like tremella mushroom that is even more hydrating for our cells. One of my favorite products from Organifi is the glow powder. I just find it helps me feel better. I love it. It tastes like pink lemonade. And with that tremella mushroom ingredient, it is supporting more cellular hydration. So if you're looking for something yummy to drink, that's also going to be supportive with your superfoods, adaptogens, and also that tremella mushroom agent, which is very hydrophilic, meaning it's loving water, then head on over to Organifi.com forward slash Varga 
and use promo code Varga for 20% off. You can also find that product also, Organifi, on my biohacking page at theschoolofradiance.com. SK, can you please repeat the name of the Organifi product? It is the Glow Formula. It's in the pink container. If you're going to get one thing from Organifi, I really like that one. I also like some of their other products as well, including the Red Juice for Energy. And that tastes like a, a fruit punch, which is good, but up without the sugar. And then there's also the Pure Formula, which helps with digestion. That one tastes like a traditional lemonade. There's also the Greens that tastes kind of like a greens with a little matcha. I think the flavor is really great. I'll have that one every couple days, but they also make an incredible collagen with 10 grams per serving. That's actually what's in my coffee as well. They also have protein and, and other things. They have a cacao in, it's called Harmony. And that cacao product is really actually quite lovely to have before bed. I don't eat a lot of chocolate but I do like the flavor of a hot chocolate and the Harmony is a great product for that. So those are some of the other things uh, just to answer your question, SK, about the name of the product and then the names of other ones and what they do and why I like them. So by the way, that red juice is great for midday energy. It just kind of gives you a boost without having another cup of coffee. Let me know any questions that you all have. Hyaluronic acid is a really interesting topic and it's a bit of a buzzword. And when I see, say, celebrities come out with their skincare products, JLo, for example, this was a couple of years ago, you know, she's telling people that she uses olive oil on her skin. The, the issue with this is, you know, people like JLo and Angelina Jolie, don't be fooled. They're getting anything and everything. Pretty sure Angelina Jolie just had a really good facelift. And JLo, you know, she says she doesn't do anything. She says she doesn't do Botox, but there's other forms of Botox on the market, like Zeoman, for example, another brand. So she could truthfully be saying she doesn't do Botox, but she could be doing something else instead. So not to harp on the celebrity topic, but when different individuals that are celebrities make products, and I noticed this in particular with JLo's launch. I watched this one very closely. It was happening, I think, during pandemic time. I mean, what else was there to do, right? <laughs> Just a joke. And I went on the sales page to purchase her product. And she'd done some things on social and the products looked beautiful. They were in this plastic acrylic packaging. And it's very much like a department store luxury looking type of product. But I do have a problem with that even because there's so much waste associated with it. There can be this like plastic square of the container for the moisturizer, but then you open up the lid, which is also massive and full of plastics. And then the little, you know, container and reservoir inside with the actual product itself is like, there's barely anything in there compared to the packaging that's like double the size of the actual reservoir of product within that. So I do, I have a problem with that too, but sure it looks pretty. And I'm sure she sold boatloads of that moisturizer, but I went on her sales page to actually to check out this product and see what was in it. And she had five hero ingredients. Of course, one of them was olive oil. And then there were other very popular ingredients to market with, such as hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, and antioxidants or peptides. But what she didn't have on her sales page was her full ingredients list. And the sales page was allowing for people to do pre-orders. They were ordering based off those five hero ingredients. Oh, it's got all these things. That's fantastic. But they were not able to pre-order well, they were able to pre-order, but they weren't able to actually look at the full ingredients list profile, which I thought was a little funny. It's like, what do they have to hide? Are they still formulating it? Are they still kind of adjusting the formulation? So I just really noticed this with a celebrity launch. And this was a big celebrity skincare launch, which I think is relevant to talk about that these kind of things are often done. Sylvia 
is uh, getting a kick out of this with a laughing emoji. So are you recommending to not do any off-label treatment that may be offered and wait until there's enough scientific studies run on it? This is actually another fantastic question. I actually do off-label usage of products pretty frequently. And what I did was actually with my first paper I ever wrote on neuromodulators for crow's feet around the eyes, because the eyes are the first area they face to show signs of aging. And I wrote that eye paper, the eye rejuvenation algorithm paper to say, hey, do skincare, do healthy living, maybe do some neuromodulators. You know, maybe surgery is going to be the best option for rejuvenating the eyelids. Maybe, you know, lasers and all sorts of things but to do fillers last. And there are some off-label usage of things like neuromodulators that I do have published in my research. And so say, for example, I really want to rejuvenate someone's eyes and give a great brow lift and reduce those horizontal lines in the lower eyelid. I'll go between the brows, around the eyes, but also to the sides of the nose, which is the nasalis muscle. And when we scrunch up our nose, say for reacting like, oh, I don't know about that, or, oh, that doesn't smell so good, or, oh, that's super sour. We are accessing our nasalis muscles that run kind of on an angle from the sides of the nose to around the corner of the mouth. And this is an example of something that's off-label that can marry and pair very well with an adjacent area, as well as even neuromodulators to the jawline. So I wrote a jawline paper actually talking about my off-label usage for things like neuromodulators into the DAO muscle, which is commonly referred to as the jowl, as well as to the chin to address the mentalis muscle, to address things like the orange peel look to the skin on the chin, or what we think are large pores on the chin, but it's actually the dimpling of the skin itself from the underlying muscle. And then also another off-label usage that I've published is actually to go just underneath the chin where that double chin would be, because there was actually a, a product on the market that was deoxycholic acid to actually dissolve fat. But it was very expensive. You had to have, you know, three, four sessions of it at $2,000 a pop. You'd be swollen for about a month. And I was actually able for a couple hundred dollars to get a really nice tuck of that double chin area because it's not just fat. There's underlying structures, there's glands, there's muscles. So that's actually why I wrote that jawline paper too. And the reason why sometimes off-label usage is helpful is really neuromodulators are only on label for say around the eyes, between the brows and the forehead, but not for the rest of the face. It's just how they do their studies and testing. But off label usage is pretty commonly utilized by practitioners who are a little bit more advanced. And I wrote papers to basically add support that, hey, these off-label areas can provide these results and utilize them in my rejuvenation algorithms, as well as with my training to teach more advanced facial full face and neck rejuvenation. That is such a great question about off-label options. It's just important that it's relayed to you by your practitioner. They have to relay this to you ethically, that what they're doing is considered off-label. That's uh, part of the nuance with that, but that's not uncommon in the medical aesthetic space to do things off-label. But the other nuance with that is you don't, as a pra practitioner, you really don't want to be a cowboy. And as you know, a prospective patient, you don't want to go to somebody who's a cowboy. You want to go to somebody who can achieve consistent, powerful rejuvenation outcomes. So this is why I wrote my papers on eye rejuvenation and jawline rejuvenation, because I was getting consistent, powerful outcomes. And I was really keen on actually sharing it with my colleagues and have been doing so for many years, especially with presenting and training. 
Now, what's also really cool is sometimes these companies that make these products will hire me to actually do workshops on uh, more advanced off-label usage. Some companies allow that in certain situations, some don't. So it is kind of like a little bit of a gray area, the off-label use. But if there's research to back it up and there's data and support that it can be helpful, then there's something to be said for that too. It just needs to be related to you. And to wrap this up, this is not medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. It can be very difficult for you online to go look up HAs, right? There's so many different brands of dermal fillers on the market. I have some preferences over others of which brands and products I like more. And there's fillers made in many different countries across the globe, but there are also fake fillers out there too. So that's why you never want to look for the best deal because if that's such a good deal, why is it such a good deal? Where did that practitioner buy that? That's also something to consider too. Um, I'm on, you know, message boards and groups with practitioners and I actually see ads for lower quality HA dermal fillers and uh, different practitioners selling off their stock. It's really important if you're a practitioner listening to only purchase any of your products directly from the manufacturer. Because if someone is getting it through a third party, you can't substantiate whether or not that product is what it is, unless, and, and practitioners aren't gonna be approved distributors. I'm an approved distributor for about the 18 different brands of products that I work for. So that is a little bit different, but um, there are some nuances with quality of what you're getting. Sylvia, what can be done for the turkey neck that many individuals are getting? Yeah, this is going to come down to good posture, good position, obviously lose that weight. What's going on with your lymphatics? And also what's the quality of the skin, the underlying muscles? what's happened with the jaw bone with recession with breakdown of the bone itself so it really just depends on what's going to be an option and also the health you know this the health status of the individual are they going to be a good candidate for injectables or are they going to be a better candidate for skincare dermal rolling and lasers there's also that to consider too And then there's also surgery and sometimes surgery is going to be the most time and cost effective solution. Also yielding the most robust and long-term impacts, but that's not for everybody. Injectables aren't for everybody. Surgery isn't for everybody. It just depends what feels right for you. The body always knows. And that's where I come in to basically help create a plan that is in accordance with your values, your budget, your lifestyle, that's going to work with that. When you go into a clinic, you might not get that same type of handholding or approach. Again, my consults online are 90 minutes. Typically, when you go into a clinic, it's going to be about 30 to 60 minutes. And there's other things that are really important to consider when it comes to skin health and rejuvenation. That just isn't commonly talked about in the clinic, which is why I'm really, you know, I would go so far as to say the first to really do skin consultations like this and bridge the gap between, you know, Western medical aesthetics with healthy living, biohacking, functional and integrative approaches as well. Because I think that, well, I know, I know now that this really is the future The future of medical aesthetics is actually integrating biohacking, functional and integrative approaches as opposed to just medical aesthetics on its own. And I know this because I actually just interviewed with a colleague of mine, uh, Christy. We host um, classes actually for practitioners over at buildingyourbeautybrand.com. That's buildingyourbeautybrand.com. Jump on our next live session. I'd love to connect with you and just get you up to speed with the medical aesthetics industry and how to really attract new clients. So again, that's a a way that I love to teach is to help practitioners build their practice. So buildingyourbeautybrand.com is specifically for practitioners and one of the avenues I can support as well as rejuvenation training. 
There's lots more questions coming in here about marionette lines. Kim, this is great. Sylvia, what about facial exercise in the mix? Why didn't you guys ask these questions before? <laughs> As opposed to two minutes before the end of the hour when I said, let me know what your questions are about 50 minutes ago. <laughs> Oh, I love you all so much. You know I'm going to have to do a follow-up class to this now, uh, specifically on the concept of marionette lines. That's the lines that go from the corner of the mouth to the, the jawbone. Uh, facial exercises, I did just do a, a lesson or a podcast rather on facial lymphatics, but the tutorials for all of these things like facial lymphatic drainage, facial muscle release, facial fascial release, applying your products, your makeup, your hair care, hair growth stimulating products, weaving in retinols and peels and dermal rolling alongside your routine with rejuvenation. These are you know pretty advanced topics. So in my seasonal skincare tutorials, you got to join now. They're fantastic. In seven, well, I think so. Well, you know, I have great testimonials as well. Let's, let's be fair. I hear, you know, just great things from those who take my tutorials that I've been offering over the years. They're always live. They're each season specific, which is really important. So I walk you through, through tutorial-based learning, where I take you into my restroom, we go start to finish using products or doing something. And I teach you basic to advanced lessons. So in seven lessons, you're going to become your own skin pro, but I definitely also recommend the one-on-one. -on -one. Every one-on-one -on -one client of mine online, in my opinion, should take at least one seasonal skincare tutorial because in the 90 minutes in the one-on-one, -on -one, we're really dialing into what's important for you and creating that customized cake recipe plan with ongoing support, I would like to add and product and routine recommendations, rejuvenation recommendations, what to do, where to go. And then in the seasonal skincare tutorials, it's really focusing on the home care. And that's an additional seven hours of information that if I tried to cram that in an hour and a half, your brain would like likely just, you know, need a reboot kind of thing. You wouldn't actually hear anything that I had to say. So that's why I have the one-on-one -on -one and my seasonal skincare tutorials. Just to clarify what that is, and then of course the membership is for those keeners out there that are looking to get back their shine, their radiance. I had a really beautiful call yesterday with Kelly, and she joined on one of these live lessons, and uh, she booked a 15-minute meet and greet with me. And I was able to, she, you know, she shared, she just wants to get that radiance, that spark back. Her kids are out of the house. She just retired and she just wants to look and feel her best. And sometimes doing a little rejuvenation or a little something, something can be helpful with that. I mean, I'm not going to beat around the bush with that, but also just really dialing in the fact that uh, we need to look after our skin better. And as we get a little bit older, you do want to tweak the products that you're using so that the products you're using are going to address your mature skin needs, not just, oh, here's an ad on Facebook for a hyaluronic acid serum. This is a really compelling before and after photo. That's probably Photoshopped and altered, by the way, which I can usually spot from a mile away. <sighs> Oh, the skincare, beauty, and rejuvenation space, a trillion dollar industry. I'm here to save your time and money. This is why I get those 100% sleep scores I'm telling you about, because I sleep really well knowing that I'm of service and really helping people on their journey, looking and feeling the best. Sylvia, I'm happy I made you laugh with that little side commentary. I really wish you asked these questions beforehand, everybody. So when I say join live, bring your questions. I don't mean bring your questions five minutes before we conclude. <laughs> oh, I get a kick out of you guys. I love you all so much. And I did put a link in the chat. If we haven't yet connected, I would love to meet you and answer some questions about the ways that you can achieve your skin goals, what that would look like. And I'm fully here to support you. Sylvia says, awesome as always, heart emoji. My absolute pleasure and now next up, I have to do a masterclass. I love teaching. It's, I mean, I'm sure you can tell. I love teaching and uh, it's not for everybody. That's for sure. And taking your questions live and recording a podcast in one take with no edits. 
I just, I like this. This is fun. And I get to hang out with some pretty cool people that, that tune in live. If you want to join live for the next one, if you're listening to the replay of this, just go ahead and check out the description of this episode and that link to join these live master classes. These live recordings are there. I also email out the invitations regularly. So be sure to join my newsletter at theschoolofradiance.com. And I have a lot of free stuff like this, but then I also have my 30 minute biohacking for the skin class. And you can register for that over at freebies at the school of radiance.com. And when you register for that, you'll also get my skincare checklist and lots of other things to help you out. Love you all so much. Have a fabulous rest of your day. And I will see you again for an upcoming lesson on marionette lines, which are also contributed to, you know, attributed to the formation of the jowl and things like that. So let's look great head to toe, inside out. Again, for the internal work, for the things that I do behind the scenes that I don't want to share publicly that have made a huge difference. That's what the membership is all about too. Love you all so much. And I will see you again right here on the School of Radiance.